Brett Gray is here on the Blaze Radio Network. Thanks for being here with us. 888 900 Also at Pat Unleashed on Twitter. By the way, Pat Unleashed, sponsored by ExpressVPN. Why haven't you gotten a VPN yet? Visit expressvpn.com slash unleashed and protect your stuff. Don't be tracked and followed. Well, I don't care if they follow me. I'm not doing anything wrong. I think we've seen that you don't you don't know what they're going what they're going to uh, consider wrong or unlawful with everything that's going on. Uh, going to church <laughs> might be the wrong move, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, whoever thought you could be fined for going to church? I mean, you and your hypotheticals. Yeah. Whatever. I wish it were hypothetical. I really do. That would be uh, that would be great. All right. All hell broke loose yesterday at the uh, press conference. Kind of fun. Oh, boy. President Trump took over the news conference, and uh, he I, I think he's a little fed up at the beating he's taking, especially at the hands of the New York Times, who ran that uh, huge editorial on, I think it was the Sunday Times, w- where it uh, outlined all the mistakes that he's supposedly made, his failure on the coronavirus, uh, on his handling of the coronavirus Yeah, that got pandemic. quite a bit of traction. Oh, did it on ever. On Sunday, yeah. So you knew you knew that he was itching, ready to go oh, yesterday. He's been seething ever since he, he got the New York Times and found out about it. So here is uh, President Trump taking over the press conference and, and essentially doing um, a talk radio show from then on. Yeah, this was uh, this interesting. Early. Yeah. And... So the story in the New York Times was a total fake. It's a fake newspaper, and they write fake stories. <laughs> and someday, hopefully in five years when I'm not here, uh-huh. those papers are all going out of business because nobody's uh-huh. going to want to read them. But <laughs> now they like them because they write about me. Now, with that, I have a couple of interesting. We have a few uh, clips that we're just going to put up. We could turn the okay. lights a little bit lower. I think you'll find them interesting. And then we'll <laughs> answer some questions. I'll ask you some questions because you're so guilty. But Forget it. Uh, but most importantly, we're going to get back uh, onto the reason we're here, okay. which right. is Are we? the success we're having. Okay? Uh, okay. Please, you can put it on. Thank you. All right. Here we go. People should be more concerned right now with the flu in this country. A lot of people are concerned about the coronavirus because they're hearing a lot of news about it right now. Pause but for the just reality a second. Is comp- so this is all important because he's been accused of not taking the coronavirus <laughs> seriously. So he's showing them all the times yeah. they didn't take coronavirus he's seriously. He's playing this in the press room. It's fantastic. This is actually, it feels like we've probably said something like this to Bush before. Something like, you know, like, why don't you just play their own words for them? Right. <laughs> Ta-da! Somebody yeah, did. Uh, President, President Trump is going to do that. <laughs> he's going to do that. And oh. especially when he's as close to Sean Hannity as he is. Um, you know, they talk every day. Oh, we probably got this. Sometimes uh, multiple times a day. I bet Hannity suggested a, the clips. This may be a montage from the Hannity <laughs> It show. might be. It might actually be. <laughs> now, he claims that uh, somebody at the White House put it together. Yeah, yeah. But I would not be surprised at all if Hannity <laughs> didn't have a big hand in this. This is funny. All right, let's see the rest. To the flu, for example, it's not even close to being at that stage. What if it is worse? Is this a moment where maybe countries put politics aside, a little bit of pride aside, and do we have U.S. officials? Should U.S. professionals such as yourself get involved? How worried should Americans be about coronavirus? Coronavirus is not going to cause a major issue in the United States. (laughs) Okay. While President Trump took decisive action... And here's the timeline, the timeline of, uh, of when Trump is case. announcing so restrictions and all whatever that. Whatever they're doing in terms of a vaccine. <laughs> we will be suspending all travel from Europe to the United States for the next 30 days. To unleash the full power of the federal government in this effort today, I am officially declaring a national emergency. Medicare patients can now visit any doctor by phone or video conference at no additional cost. The first one million masks will be available immediately. Okay. Even as partisan sniped and criticized. Oh, okay. Is the as next there section. were more cases, and it was clear that it was spreading out of China, Maggie Haberman from New where York it Times. originated. The president took this move that he was widely criticized for by Democrats and even some Republicans at the time, which was he halted a number of flights from China into the U.S. 
-hmm. The idea was to halt the spread of the disease, keep transmissions to a minimum. He was accused of xenophobia. He was accused of making a racist move. True. At the end of the day, it was probably effective because Mm -hmm. it did Mm -hmm. actually take a pretty aggressive measure against the spread of the virus. Okay. Bipartisan governors recognize the president's support. Here's this section. His team is on it. They've been responsive <laughs> late at night, early in the morning. Yep. Uh, and they've uh, <laughs> thus far been doing everything that they can do. And I want to say thank you. And I want to say that I appreciate it. He returns calls. He reaches out. Governor Newsom. Uh, he's been proactive. Uh, we got that mercy ship down here in Los Angeles. That was directly because he sent it down here. 2,000 uh, medical mm-hmm. uh, units came to the state of California. These FMS, these these field medical stations. Uh, and that's been very, very helpful. The president has been uh, uh, outstanding uh, through all this. The vice president's been outstanding. Members of the coronavirus task force, very responsive. We had asked if we could have New Jersey could have access to a piece of the beds that are on the USNS Comfort, and the president came back, called me a short few minutes before I walked in here to say, indeed, they would grant that to New Jersey. So that's a big step for us in addition to all the other capacity. Okay. That news is literally hot off the press, and I thank the president and vice president who are on the call together. President Trump approved Arizona's request for a presidential major disaster declaration. I want to thank the president for a quick turnaround. We requested this on a Wednesday, and we had approval by Saturday morning. And we are grateful to the administration for their continued support and responsiveness. Well, first of all, I want to uh, thank uh, the, the, the president and the vice president for doing a really good job of communicating with all the governors. Okay. And... So we could give you hundreds of clips like that from governors, including Democratic or Democrat, as I call them, governors, which Mm -hmm. is actually the correct term. Uh, We could give you hundreds of clips just like that. We have them. Uh, We didn't want this to go on too long, but I just want to say it's, uh, you know, it's very sad when people write false stories like, in that case, I guess it was gotten mostly from The New York Times, which is a highly... I mean, if you had libel laws, uh, they would have been out of business even before they'll end up going out of business. So (laughs) it's too bad. But we could have given you some of the statements. We have hundreds of statements, hundreds of statements, including Mm -hmm. from Democrats and Democrat governors. So so there's his uh, presentation during the uh, during the the news conference yesterday. And it the the news media went out of their minds over it. (laughs) And I love this article uh, that was written about it. In a stunning move, President Donald Trump hijacked the daily coronavirus press briefing. It's usually him conducting the press. What do you mean he hijacked it? To offer a surreal and prolonged attack on the media. I didn't think it was surreal. I didn't know it was an attack. It was just playing their words for them. Exactly. I don't know. What's the attack? Exactly. (laughs) The president was clearly set off by a blockbuster New York Times report, and that's true from saturday that included stunning details about the administration's belated and chaotic response i mean the bias from everybody other than you know fox and talk radio is is just so overwhelming and so ridiculous that he has to respond to this kind of stuff he's got an election in november that he has to win and if he allows them to just plant in everybody's minds the fact that he did a crappy job with this virus, he's not going to be president of the United States anymore. So, yeah, he's taking matters into his own hands, and he's showing people, look, this is what others were saying. Yesterday, I listened to uh, uh, Rush while I sat in a parking lot eating my (laughs) Chick-fil-A. And, uh, (laughs) because you can't go in. Oh, I know. And so, you just get the food and and I, I couldn't wait until I, I got back to the studio, so I just sat in the parking lot. Yeah, and there's many a waffle fry now wedged between my seat <laughs> and the dash now that are stinking up yeah, the truck. Yeah, a little <laughs> couple of milkshake stains maybe on the seats <laughs> at the dashboard. Uh, anyway, Rush played the Fauci stuff that we talked about yesterday over and over. It must have been an hour. 
that he spent on Fauci's words in January and February and Fauci's words over the weekend where he said that lives could have been saved if they would have mitigated sooner. And then, but then he played what we did, um, but he kept going back to it over and over. And I think he's just trying to make, he, he's trying to, to have the impact that the entire mainstream media is having mm-hmm. by just drilling this into people's heads. And I, I, I thought it was great because it, it's important for people to understand what has happened here. It is true that when Trump announced that he was cutting off flights uh, to and from China, he was called a racist by virtually every news media. MSNBC and CNN went out of their minds about it. How racist is this to just be cutting off China now? Travel to China. Why? Yeah. Because yeah. you hate Asians? And Joe Biden even used the word xenophobic right, to describe Trump's actions that day. And now he quietly over the weekend uh, admitted, yeah, okay, uh, it, was, uh, it was good that uh, we cut off travel to China when we did. Right. We should have done it much sooner and more sweeping. We should have... We should have stopped. We should have stopped travel from every country on Earth for a while. Would have saved us. Would have saved us all this trouble, uh, because it initially came from elsewhere. If you remember, the first patients that uh, were in the United States had just been to Wuhan. So then he he tries to uh, slow the spread of the virus by cutting off travel between the U.S. and Europe. Well, then, those are our allies. What do you, you can't, you can't stop people for, what about the Americans who are there? All of that. And then the xenophobic talk as well. Uh, it's, I mean, he can't win no matter what he does. So, of course, he's, he's going to take this kind of action. And, you know, that's what we, that's part of what we love about him because he will not just sit back and have his head kicked in. Yeah, I love that, though. Whenever Trump does something that impacts um, uh, a country, like uh, China or Africa or something, then he's racist or xenophobic. Mm-hmm. When it's Europe, then it's well, that's our allies. Yes. So they always they always figure out which word to yes. plug in to <laughs> to go a- a- after a-, a Trump action. It's always something, and so naturally, uh, the CNN buffoons had to attack again and talk about the propaganda that he presented. The president has every right to defend himself. The president has a key. A few key right. points he wants uh-huh. to make about his action on the China, China ban. He's absolutely correct. Uh, however, uh, I spent nine and a half years however. in that building, close to 10 mm-hmm. years in that building, including in that briefing room as a White House correspondent, many of them working with you uh, back in the Clinton administration. Then I stayed on through the George W. Bush administration. That was propaganda. Mm-hmm. That was not just a campaign <laughs> video. That was propaganda aired at taxpayer huh. expense in the White House briefing room. And it was selective cherry picking information. Again, the president has every right to be proud of imposing the travel restrictions on China. He was criticized by other people at the time. And Mm -hmm. it it turns out every public health expert will now tell you that that helped. That helped. That was the one thing the president Mm -hmm. did early on. Some of those other things that were announced in there were cherry picked. And they ignore some things like on January 22nd, when the president was asked by CNBC, uh, is there going to be a pandemic? No, not at all. That was the president of the United States on January 22nd. Uh, The president in early February said, looks like in April, you know, in theory, gets a little warmer. It miraculously goes away. Uh, The president said then on February 26th at the White House, Mm -hmm. this is the flu. This is like the flu. Uh, He said in that same press conference, we're going to get very substantially 15 people, 15 within a couple of days. It's going to be down to zero. I could go on and on and on, Wolf, with other things the president has said. Mm -hmm. Again, he Mm -hmm. has every right to defend himself. He has every right to push back. He has every right to challenge things that are Mm -hmm. factually not true. Mm -hmm. Uh, But to play a propaganda video at taxpayer expense Uh in the White House briefing room, is a new, you can insert your favorite word here, in this administration. Uh, there are ways to do things, and then there's that. That's just plain out uh, should have checked with you, yeah. right, James before Brady he did it. should have checked with John Something King. I would and expect from his uh, find out re-election the campaign, campaign not from the sitting right, president of the stop. United States. It- uh, I can't take it anymore. First of all, propaganda and cherry-picking is what CNN does every single day. All day. Every day. Propaganda for Democrats and socialists. Their non-stop despicable criticism of Trump is what? That's news, I guess. That's not cherry-picking. That's not propaganda. 
But if he defends himself, then it's cherry picking. Well, of course, he's not going to show the times when he was being a cheerleader for, uh, you know, for the United States so the people don't panic. Leaving things out. CNN would never leave anything out that the president did, right? They always talk about his ban on travel to China and Europe. Just amazing. And this president is always going to defend himself, and I, for one, I love it on occasions like this. It's exactly what he needs to be doing, is defending himself. Then we had uh, CBS's Paula Reed and her agenda to deal with. Is that you bought yourself some time and you didn't use it to prepare hospitals, you didn't use it to ramp up testing. Right you're now, so, you're so, you're so disgraceful. Are it's so disgraceful the way you say that. Let, let me just, listen, I just went over it. To make people I just went over in an unprecedented crisis. Nobody thought we should do it. And when I did it. But what did you do with the time that you bought? You know, the we month did. of February. That, you that know, video we did. Was a gap. What do you do? What do you do when you have no wow. case in the whole United States? You had cases when in you, you, excuse me, you reported it. Zero cases, zero deaths on January 17th. January. February, the entire January, February, I said in January. Has a gap on January 30th. Tell me this isn't an February agenda. The time that your travel ban a lot. A lot. And in fact, we'll give you a list. What we did, in fact, part of it was up there. It we did a lot. A look, look. You know you're a fake. You know that. <laughs> your whole network, the way you cover it, is fake. Great. And most of you, and not all of you. Great. But the people are wise to you. That's why you have a lower a lower approval rating than you've ever had before, times probably three. And when you ask me that question, let me ask you this: Why didn't Biden? Why didn't? Why did Biden apologize? Why did he write a letter of apology? No, that's very important. Why did the Democrats think that I acted too quickly? You know why? Because they really thought that I acted too quickly. We have done a great Wait, job. Now I could have, I could have mm -hmm. kept it open. And I could have done what some countries are doing. They're getting beat up pretty badly. I could have kept it open. I thought of keeping it open because nobody's ever heard of closing down a country, let alone the United States of America. But if I would have done that, we would have had hundreds of thousands of people that would right now be dead. We've done this right. And we, we really, we really have done this right. The problem is the press doesn't cover it the way it should be. Mm. Amazing. Uh, 888 Let me take 60 seconds. Tell you about iTarget Pro. Uh, right now, the gun stores are jammed. Ammo sales through the roof. If you were hoping to go to the gun range to practice, you know, so that you're ready for the zombie apocalypse, good luck. Between prices skyrocketing and social distancing and everything being closed, you can forget about range time. That's why it's so great that there's iTarget Pro using their proprietary app and a laser bullet instead of an actual bullet. iTarget Pro allows you to safely practice with your actual firearm in the convenience, privacy, and safety of your own home. Don't have to go anywhere. There's never been a better time to purchase the iTarget Pro system. Dry fire training will develop muscle memory, help with target reaction speed, sight alignment, trigger function, all kinds of things iTarget comes in all the major calibers, including 223 and 556. And right now, you can get 10% uh, off plus free shipping when you use the offer code PAT. We're all seeing what happens when we're not properly prepared. Make iTarget Pro part of your preparation today. That's the letter I, then TargetPro.com. iTargetPro.com, offer code PAT. <laughs> Gray Unleashed. Then a guy I used to have a lot of respect for, uh, John Carl from ABC. I don't know. He's been really irritating me lately. He's got a book to sell, man. No, that's true. That's true. So here was his big question uh, to the president after his presentation. But forget it. Uh, but most importantly, we're going to get back onto the reason we're here, mm. which is the success we're having. Okay? Uh, please, okay. you can put it on. Thank you. Yeah, this People is should be more no. We're looking for the right John. Now. John Carl, do we have John Carl? I've never yeah. seen a video yeah. like that played in, in this room. Uh, it looks a, a bit like a campaign ad. Who who produced that video for you? Uh, that was done by a group in the office, and it was done just by we just put some clips together. I could give you. Uh, 
Mm -hmm. I'll bet you I have over 100 more clips, even better than them. They were just pieced together over the last mm -hmm. two hours. That was just, oh, we have far better than that. That's nothing compared to some of them. This was produced here in the White House. Yeah, by, this was uh, done by uh, Dan and a group of people, and they just put it together in a period of probably less than two hours. Why did you feel need to do that? Because uh, we're Why'd getting you fake news, and I like to have it corrected. Uh, they're saying what a great job we're doing. Great. And the media, these are the governors of California, governor of New Jersey, governor of New York. Look, in New York, mm -hmm. we work very close with Andrew. In New York, Ventilators were going to be a problem. We, we didn't, they didn't have a problem. We got them tremendous numbers of thousands, but we got them tremendous number of ventilators. You don't hear ventilators are a problem. Beds were going to be a problem. I mean, I'm happy about it. The Javits Center, which is incredible, is almost empty because they don't need them. That's good news, not bad news. I, you know, I'm not saying, gee, I wish more people were there. I don't want more people there. We brought in the boat. We brought in the comfort. Mm -hmm. And the comfort was originally not supposed to be for this at all. The coronavirus, we're not supposed to be for that at all. They called, they said, could we have it? That was a number of weeks ago. We said, we don't think you need it, but if you need it, we'll do it. Then they said, could you get the medical personnel to run the Javits Center? Could you get the medical personnel to run the ship? We said, if it's necessary, we will, and we did. We, there were military personnel. That's the ones that Mayor de Blasio was so great to in terms of his statements. I mean, I really appreciated his statements. He was so impressed with them, and I am, too. The level of, of uh, genius and bravery, they're great people, the military people. And we pieced that together. I would say it took less than two hours. It was done in-house, Steve. But, but just to be clear, this was placed by right. government employees, by, by people here at the White House, this campaign-style I, I wouldn't use the here. word produced. All they did was took some clips, and they just <laughs> ran them for you. And the reason they did is to keep you honest. Now, I don't think that's going to work. It's not going to have any impact. All right. I've seen it but up. just think of I, John, what, what is Carl trying to get to there? He's oh. trying to get to the fact that Sean Hannity produced it. No, I, I don't think so. I think I he's think trying he to get to the fact that taxpayer dollars were used. Is that what you're saying? Uh, it was done here in the White House. Right. But I think he, his problem is he doesn't believe that the White House staff produced it. I, I think he's trying to get mm. to uh, Sean Hannity is so important to you that he produces video for you. I see. Or maybe Mark Levin or whoever. Rush Limbaugh put this together for you. Uh, but whatever the case, I, you know, why do you feel the need to do that? Uh, gee, I don't know. Maybe because I'm being hammered 24 hours a day, every day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, and you guys never take time off from that? Well, this is a leap year, so I think it was 366 days. Oh, well, that's days. right. Uh, that is correct. We don't want to forget the hammering he took on February 29th because <laughs> uh, there was plenty of it. Uh-huh. Uh, all right. 888 Now, how are you going to get uh, through this time of the shutdown? Well, the direct deposits of the stimulus checks start arriving tomorrow. So you might get, what, $1,200 in stimulus money in your bank account tomorrow? Mm -hmm. I would start, you know, checking your account for that uh, and and see if it lands in your account just like magic. Yeah. yeah. And then how many more times are we going to land $1,200 or $2,000 right. in yeah. people's accounts more, afterward? More, more money to be spent, I'm sure. Yeah. You know, there was a disturbing element to Trump's um, uh, press conference yesterday. Uh, there sure was. Where he was talking about... Uh, Quote, when somebody's president of the United States. Yeah, listen to this. Okay. this. This is crazy. It's a decision for the president of the United States. Now, with that being said, we're going to work mm -hmm. with the states because it's very important. You have it local is. governments. They're pinpointed. It's really, you talk about, it's a, like a microchip. They're pinpointed. We have mm -hmm. local government that hopefully will do a good job. And if they don't do a good job, I'd step in so fast. But no, oh. they can't do anything without the approval of the president of the United States. Wait, the president's what? authority. Not mine, because it's not me. This is when somebody's the president of the United States, yeah. the authority is total. And Wait. that's the way it's got to be. The authority is total. It's total. It's total. And the governors okay. know that. So now he's, uh, the governors know the governor's that. Now you have a couple of bands of, of, excuse me, excuse me. You have a couple. Could you rescind that one? 
You have a couple of bands of uh, of uh, Democrat governors, but they will agree to it. They will agree to it. But uh, mm. the authority of the President of the United States having to do with the subject we're talking about is total. Yeah. A quick wow. question on something you just said. You said when someone is President of the United States, <laughs> their authority is total. Yeah, we heard that. That is not true. Who, who okay. told you, you know what we're who told do? you that? We're going to write up papers on this. It's not going to be necessary. <laughs> no, it is, because I, I want to see that, too. One way or the other, because mm -hmm. ultimately it comes with the federal government. That being said, we're getting along very well with the governors, mm -hmm. and I feel very certain that uh, there won't be a problem. Has yeah, please, governor, go ahead. Has any governor agreed that you have the authority to decide when their state I haven't asked back anybody. Because I no don't, you know why? Because I don't have to. <laughs> okay. So, defending himself is one thing. That's great. Uh, I, I love the things he did at the press conference to defend himself, uh, but then he pushed it just a bit too far. Uh, yeah. Uh, the power of the president in any situation is not absolute. Mm. He, he does not have total and complete absolute authority. There is a separation of powers mm. where you've got the executive, mm -hmm. the legislative, yeah. and the judicial. Yeah, I've made a, a handy little graph uh, if the president happens to be tuning in right now. Um, this, this is our system of government here. I don't know if you can check that out. Mm-hmm. Uh, the three branches, judicial, executive, legislative, as you just said. Yeah. And uh, they're co-equal. And that means that uh, they have uh, equal uh, authority. Yeah, nobody has total power. I can't. I mean, And you might also uh, include um, federal versus states and the Tenth Amendment about the power of the states. He and has been so good. He yeah, has been so he has. good with federalism during this crisis. Until deferring now. Deferring to the governor, saying mm -hmm. that they're, you know, they make their own decisions. And now I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's because all of a sudden you've got governors talking about uh, firing up their economies and he wants credit for that. When you know that, that might be. I think that's what it is. I might think be. he wants to say, nope, now we're turning it on so that he gets the credit for this. And that's shameful. We have Texas Governor uh, Abbott saying that he's got a plan to fire up Texas. Uh, and Cuomo and five other states yeah. got together yesterday as well and said, we're, we're putting together a plan to restart our economy. That might be I think that's irritating him a little bit. Yeah, I think that's his motivation, which is sad that, that he would be petty if that is his motivation in this. Yeah. But uh, uh, you had a pat head this morning uh, on Twitter when I posted that quote. Uh, James said that uh, this is kind of like the equivalent to Obama saying, I have a pen and I have a phone. Yeah. I mean, if, and we, if we Obama, were pissed then. Right, if Obama were saying the quote, if this is Obama saying, when somebody's president of the United States, the authority is total. We'd oh. be losing our minds. Oh, my gosh. We would be losing our minds. Absolutely. And so now the justification is that some people are saying, well, uh, he's got the uh, National or the Defense Production Act authority. Okay, but he doesn't have the authority to make decisions of no, when lockdowns and states get lifted and stuff. These are governors, mayors. These are school boards that are making these decisions. Now, the president of the United States does not have the authority to tell your kid, uh, you don't have to go to school this week. Come on. Stop I, it. I don't understand why he feels the need to say that kind of stuff. Because that can't be... Uh, I mean, apparently, there are a lot of people who will still defend it. Who will still say... Well, yeah, in this particular instance, is uh, he does have it because of the emergency powers or of this the is president. A, this is a time of war. Yes. And oh. extraordinary times call for extraordinary means. So, I, you know, you'll have his defenders still. Yeah. That, that I, but again, if it was Obama, people would be apoplectic right that's now. That's the equivalent of saying that it's okay when George Bush said I had to um, violate free market principles in order to save we the had free to market. Abandon. Abandon. The free market. To save the free market. <laughs> So now we're, we've got to abandon uh, the, the Constitution yeah, to yeah. save the Constitution. <laughs> um, well, no, if you say it like that. <laughs> no, let's not do that. That's a non-starter, Mr. President. Wow. And stick to the script, mm -hmm. and the script is the United States Constitution. Okay? Yeah. Triple eight nine hundred thirty-three ninety-three, And he was on to something at the first part of that, and then it veered a little bit off course <laughs> at the end there. Uh, more Pat Gray Unleashed coming up. Now back to Pat Gray on the Blaze Radio Network. 
uh, leading scientific journal in Britain, Nature, has apologized in an article that was published yesterday. Well, or today, or was it last week? Yeah, it was. This was a while ago. Um, because they associated the coronavirus with the place it originated, China. <laughs> <laughs> On the grounds that the linkage had inspired racist attacks against people with Asian heritage across the world. That we did that we did so was an error on our part for which we take responsibility and apologize. The coronavirus outbreak originated in Wuhan, China, and first appeared in bats thought to have infected wild animals that were sold in the city's wet markets. Since then, it's spread to at least 177 countries and blah, blah, blah. And they're really sorry that they ever said it was a China virus. <laughs> they also chastised a minority of politicians who are sticking with outdated script, continuing to associate a virus and the disease it causes with a specific place is irresponsible and needs to stop. Okay. Uh, such asinine nonsense. That's what we've always done. Why is it all of a sudden now completely ridiculous to call it by where it originated? We do it with hundreds of diseases. Plus, here's a reminder uh, about how the press was handling this just a few weeks ago. Listen to this. Clip 19 today. Now, there is... One simple question in all this. The question is, what do we call this virus? What do we call it? President Trump had an answer yesterday. He tweeted mm -hmm. out a reference to the Chinese coronavirus. Okay, Trump has been doing this the whole time. See, so yesterday he tweets, the United States will be powerfully supporting those industries like airlines and others that are particularly affected by the Chinese virus. Uh -huh, that's true. They say that's racist. They have short memories because if they could remember even back a week ago or two weeks ago. News just into CNN. The official death toll from the Wuhan coronavirus in China's Hubei province has now risen to 780. Having to deal with it, the total number of deaths from the Wuhan coronavirus, it's now surpassed the SARS outbreak from 2002, 2003. Uh, 2003. Spreading fast as the number of confirmed cases of the Wuhan virus continue to surge. In a matter of days, Dr. Li Wenliang went from treating patients to becoming one. The 34-year-old ophthalmologist diagnosed Saturday with the Wuhan coronavirus. We have new information about how the Wuhan coronavirus is spread. Oh my, The Wuhan On CNN? virus, uh, which originated, mm. as we know, in Wuhan, China. CNN again. <laughs> Just in case the name right. Wuhan virus yeah, we got didn't it give you an idea of where it is. Uh, amazing. Amazing. All over the press, including CNN, multiple times they referred to it as the Wuhan virus or the Chinese virus, the coronavirus that comes from China, the Chinese Wuhan virus, whatever. I mean, they did, they did it over and over and over and over again. Uh, why? Because that's what we've always done. We've always named it after the place it originates or the place where it, it got the worst. Even Bill Maher is uh, taking the press to task. Uh, he's he's an interesting cat, <laughs> isn't he? I yeah. mean, he is dead on sometimes, as uh, in that particular clip, and then just so wrongheaded at other times. It's it's amazing. He does have his things that he's you know fairly libertarian or reasonable or almost conservative on, and. That's just common sense that when you've always named things after all, always named these viruses after the place they originate, why would you change it now all of a sudden? The one thing he meant he didn't mention was German measles. I mean, are, are, are Germans offended? Have they been offended for 150 years over that? So ridiculous. Plus, the majority of American adults agree with using the term Chinese virus to describe coronavirus. Uh, despite all the nonsense from the media. Three consecutive national surveys by the Harris Poll found more than 50% of Americans said they somewhat or strongly agree with Trump using the term. Hmm. 
The poll results uh, make for a stark contrast with the national media's reaction. Uh, they just can't handle it. Naked. Oh, John Heileman of MSNBC called it nakedly racist and obviously racist and, and blatantly racist. <laughs> so what do you think of that, John? Do you think it's racist or uh, really having a hard time deciphering how you feel about it? Mm. But, I mean, that, that just shows uh, how ridiculous it is. And especially when the entire media was referring to it that way in the beginning. And then they found something that, oh, wait a minute. We can be outraged over this instead. Let's instead just start screaming uh, racism again, because that's what they love to do. Triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. Apparently, you brought uh, some masks for us to wear. Yeah, don't we want to be, you know, proper in how we conduct business here? Um, Yeah. So you want to? No, I don't want to. No, you go ahead and put that on. Why not? Uh, I just, I thought, I'm not wearing one. I thought one. we agreed to be safe, you know? We're, we're, yeah, no, we didn't agree gonna to We're going to be that. responsible, show up at mm-hmm. work. We're essential, apparently. Mm-hmm. I don't know who came up with that definition, but, um, mm-hmm. well. Anyhow. Let me just show you how that, uh, the mask that you're going to, just about yeah, to put yeah, on gonna, your face. What, what, I'm going to, what's wrong? Let me just show you how that's, how that's being made. Okay. Uh. All right, well. Oh, there's a mask being assembled. <laughs> At a sweatshop. Oh, 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 no. Bunch of men in... Uh, oh, like literally sweating. Yeah. Oh, my... No! And then they... No! They just go to the floor. Oh, come on! Drag them all over what the floor. What is happening? It's those exact masks, too, it looks like. Ah! Uh, <laughs> uh, look at this. Look at this. And these were made? That is unbelievable. February 20th. That is... On February 22nd. 2020. Believable. That is horrific. <laughs> horrific. But, mean, but so, okay, so I I, <clears throat> I had a feeling that, that you were going to show that, mm. but it's okay because these masks came from a box that's in my garage and they're not made in India. They're made, oh, they're made in, made in China. Oh, okay. As you can yeah, see. So, so that's so, yeah. so much way better. better. Way, way better. I mean, seriously. You see stuff like that. You got to think. Wow. I'm better off not putting this on my face. Oh, definitely. Mm. Plus, that's not one of those N95 masks. Oh, I got right? that. I got I got you covered there. Should we do the show with N95 masks? You want to put this sure. on? Go ahead. You wear that all day. I mean, the audio might I'll be a little... I'll support you wearing it. Uh, might be a little muffled. I have some, some gloves here. You want you want to wear some gloves around the studio just mm. to be... No. Kind of set an example. But you go ahead. You go ahead and put the mask on, put the gloves on. Got to set an example. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's gross. That's really freaking gross that those it's masks are made... Hard to believe that that's okay with them to just drag the masks across the floor. I remember, I was talking as they're assembling it. I was talking last week about how some of these PPEs are made in unsanitary conditions. Ta-da! Or, or they found like a dead bug in one of the shipments. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, there's a guy here in Metro Dallas that wanted a government contract, but when they could save some money, they went with places like you just saw. <clears throat> Just shows you you get what you pay for, right? It, I mean, when it's made in India, it's not going to be made the way people make things in the United States of America. We just have different rules and standards and uh, regulations about things like that. Some regulations make sense. Yes. Others. <laughs> yes. Like, hey, <laughs> don't drag the mask you're making for people to wear on their face across the floor. across the floor or up against your <clears throat> bare feet. <laughs> Uh, make it stop. So uh, anyway, um, kudos to our uh, frontline warriors uh, in hospitals. Yeah. Because you're wearing sure. that. Well, I'm probably wearing something a little bit better. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, not that. Not those. those. That was just one example. Everything else that comes from over there is totally. Remember sterile. the Patriot plane, the New England Patriot plane from uh, from. The Kraft family yeah. that flew to China and got a million dollars worth of masks and then flew them back here and then donated them all to the local hospitals. Oh, no, 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 don't say it. Yeah, a lot of those were uh, inferior Chinese made. Well, they were all made in China, but there's a couple of there's a couple of companies in China that 
that the medical institute here in America trusts to, to make the N95 masks. These were KN95 masks. I don't know what the K stands for. Uh, crap, maybe. <laughs> the crap 95, crap N95 mask, because oh. they said that they're, they're, they're not, they're worthless. They're essentially worthless. Wow. And so about half of them or more are not even, are not even being used by uh, oh the medical community in That's New England. That's just horrible. Yeah. I mean, you just don't, you never know. That's why, I don't know, we should be manufacturing things like that. Critical medical uh, equipment and medicines and many other things should be made here in the United States. And we need to take that stuff, the manufacturing from China, and move it back here. If we haven't learned anything from this virus, it should be that, right? I mean, there should be at least that one thing that we've learned on how important it is to manufacture things like that in the United States of America now. Because they can withhold all of this, too, uh, if they want to. They get pissed off at us. They're trying to hurt us in whatever way. Um, man, they can, they can stop our shipment of uh, antibiotics, other medications, because most of them are made right there in China. Uh, we, Something needs to be done about that, said too. This- Quite a bit. We don't want to be beholden to a hostile nation. And right. if ever there were one, <laughs> yep. uh, that'd be China. Triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. Uh now some other important issues. Um thanks to the coronavirus, there is now a massive chicken wing surplus in the United States. Oh wow. That's good. Yeah, chicken wing sales generally peak twice during the year. Super Bowl and the NCAA tournament. We had the Super Bowl, uh, but no March Madness. So nobody bought uh, tri- chicken wings uh, during yeah. during a tournament because there wasn't one. Restaurants are closed and stuff. Yeah, oh, so gosh. now we got a massive surplus of chicken wings. Mm. Uh, according to president, uh, the president of the Fells Point Wholesale Meats in Baltimore. Yeah. The basketball, it's for real. The basketball didn't happen. People are not going to restaurants, and there's a lot of excess. Mm. Uh, the wings are now being sold for a little over a dollar per pound, roughly half of what they went for uh, around the Super Bowl. Uh-huh. There are nearly one and a quarter million pounds of wings sold during the NCAA tournament wow. that was supposed to start last uh, last month. That's a fun fact. This week, there were just 433,000 pounds sold. That's so, what, about a third? Yeah, two-thirds mm-hmm. two thirds of the nation's chicken wings uh, <laughs> have gone unsold. So you can probably <clears throat> get a really good bargain on them. Which is good because a lot of the pork is going to be unavailable. They closed down at just a, a massive oh, yeah. pork producing plant in Sandy in uh, South Dakota oh. because they had some sick employees there uh, with the coronavirus, and nobody wants to eat tainted pork. Uh, <laughs> but it's bacon though, <laughs> so it's tainted bacon. I mean, it, that's a tough call. Yes, yes, it is. I could almost take my chances <laughs> if it's bacon. You got Corona flavored bacon. Are you gonna eat it? Mm. <laughs> it's a tough choice. Taste mm-hmm. pandemic-y. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Uh, and that, that stinks. Uh, they're worried about other meat processing plants, obviously, because somebody's gonna get sick at one of them, right? And then you're gonna have a meat shortage on your hands. Why couldn't it be a kale shortage or a broccoli shortage? Right. No, it's got to hit us right where we live. Yeah, but can't you just cook it out? Can't you just cook the virus right out? I don't know. I, I wanted to ask about that. We should ask uh, some expert on that. If it does cook out in, you know, 300 or 400 degree heat. I don't know. I don't know. Someone experiment. Someone get some bacon from this uh, South Dakota plant and let's, uh, let's get to cracking. That'd make a good YouTube video. Uh, yeah. Let's find out. Let's test it before and after. Uh, mm-hmm. and the scientific, the scientific chef. Somebody go and do this right now. The scientific chef. You should buy that domain. You're welcome. Health officials are investigating a beef plant too in northern Colorado after no. as many as 50 employees test 50 no. employees tested positive for COVID-19, and two died from it. Oh no. Meat processing plant employs uh, 6,000 in Greeley, Colorado, 50 miles north of Denver. It's owned by uh, some Brazilian company, one huh. of the world's largest meat processors. Well, so, yeah, there's some trouble. 
yeah. uh, ahead. And there's a couple of experiments there for the scientific chef. Uh, we got a bacon and a meat uh, experiment you can pull off in the kitchen. Triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. More Pack Ray Unleashed coming up. Pat Gray Unleashed on the Blaze Radio Network. Is here yep. on the Blaze Radio Network. Got some tweets at Pat Unleashed. Lost my Jeffy name tweets. We should call smallpox big pox for a while. Even it out for the libs. Point of personal privilege. Uh, I'm I'm a big pox. <laughs> I'm a big pox. Uh, Amy, what's her face? When you have to try really hard to convince the world that something is racist, it might be because you're the only one whose mind works that way. Hence, <laughs> you're the racist. Hmm. Kara 3022, we aren't supposed to put our hands on our faces, but notice that besides dragging those masks across the floor, they're touching them with their hands without gloves. So gross. Yeah, let's see that video again. Uh, This is where some of these masks are being manufactured. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is in India. Seems to be a lovely little place where they seem to be putting together the masks. I mean, I feel healthy just watching that on the floor. Look at that guy. He's, he's, he sat in front of the tube with a few beers on more yeah. than one occasion. Yeah. And oh. they just sew them, and then they just pile up on the floor. Then they drag them across the floor. <laughs> and then the floor is staple their table. to them. Oh, look, he's folding it meticulously. And though. not a one of them wearing gloves. You're right. Oh, my word. I ah, don't worry about it. That's fine. I'm sure that's fine. Anyway. There's that mask. So do you want to wear that? Stay healthy, y'all. A, that's not that's not helping you anyway. That's not keeping you protected from the virus, those particular masks. No. So. Uh, but it keeps you from, what, sneezing on people? Uh, yeah, maybe. All right. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh-huh. So if you are in the medical field or you're, I don't know, planning a trip to Walmart today mm-hmm. and you want to put on one of these one of these light blue you know, generic masks. Just remember that if video. It, if, if you're smelling feet. <laughs> now you know why. Now you know why. Uh, uh, from Pew Pew One Pew, Ugh. how is it propaganda when you take everything that they said and show it to the whole world? Uh, right. That's all the president was doing, was showing what they said uh, about about uh, the virus and how it wasn't a big deal at first. I mean, even Fauci did that. Even Anthony Fauci was saying, nah, Americans don't really need to worry about this. Yeah, don't change anything. That was as recent as February 29th. Which... That's pretty late in the game. Mm-hmm. Wow. That's a month after we had our first. The, the, oh, that's, yeah, it's five and a half weeks from the first case in the United States, mm-hmm. and it's a full month after Trump did the, ch- stopped, the stopped flights to yeah, China. Yeah. Uh, Jeffy's 18 Spoons, CNN. I can't believe Trump would air a propaganda video from the press room. Hmm. Only the press should be allowed to air propaganda videos. Yeah, that's what that is what they think. Um, can I can I just interject for a moment? Um, later this morning, you're going to be uh, apparently filling in for one Glenn Beck on his show. Is that is that accurate? It seems to be accurate. He's sick. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's sick. Mm-hmm. What do you think he's got? Uh, COVID nineteen. Yeah, let's watch. He's this. been he's been sitting home for what five <laughs> weeks, six weeks, five weeks, six. Yeah. Uh, and then he's the one who came down with it. No, nah, he didn't actually get COVID nineteen. Uh, he's got some stomach virus or something. Okay. All right. Well, I don't know. Let's monitor the situation. I'm just, I'm upset because it curtails our series that you lead at youtube.com slash Pat Gray. Mm-hmm. Three games to one. You're up three to one. You were going to try to put me away today with magnetic, magnetic darts. And mm. I was looking forward to rallying here. And apparently, nope, somebody had to go and get sick. So you'll be out there today. So have fun. To do that another day. Have fun doing the show today instead of playing games with me out here in the hall. Whatever. Uh, by the way, South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem is announcing plans to launch a statewide trial. I love it. To formally test the effectiveness of hydroxychloroquine, the anti-malaria drug touted by the president, mm-hmm. 
The action makes South Dakota the first state in the nation to implement a trial to test the drug's effectiveness in oh. treating and preventing COVID-19. Did she get um, the okay from the guy with all the authority? The president? Did he say this with, was okay? With total authority? He says he has total authority. I would I would think he'd be okay with I'm this. I'm sure he'd be okay, sure. but does she I have don't know official for sure. approval yeah. from the president to do this? In order to collect data about the potential treatment, doctors in the state have been instructed to prescribe the drug, along with the antibiotic, azithromycin, to willing COVID-19 patients who desire to be a part of the trial. She said, from day one, I've said we're going to let the science, facts, and data drive our decision-making in South Dakota. I made, oh, here she says, uh, I made direct requests to President Trump and Vice (laughs) President Pence to supply us with enough hydroxychloroquine (laughs) so that it could be made available for every hospitalized person in the state. Well, okay then. That's fantastic. Yeah, I love it. She She is really something. Yeah. Today, I'm pleased to report... We have received the initial doses we need. So she did coordinate this with uh, with mm-hmm. the president. Obviously. Good for her. Uh-huh. Uh, that's really something. So <clears throat> they're going to, South Dakota going to be part of this, of this trial. And maybe we'll find out once and for all whether, whether or not COVID, uh, the hydroxychloroquine works on COVID-19. I mean, a lot of, a lot of doctors have said, it, have said, yeah, it does. And I've been treating patients with it who are really critical. And they come in here and they're at death's door anyway. Why not try it? Because uh, there's another interesting story today about how, uh, how much more willing Republicans are to try hydro- hydroxychloroquine than dem- Democrats. Huh. Um, wow. Something like 50% of Republicans are willing to try it. 18%. How many? 18% Thank you. of Democrats are willing to try hydroxychloroquine. That's just asinine. That's just because the president said it, so I'm not going to do it. <laughs> right. Well, okay. Uh, what, what percentage of Democrats are willing to try um, fishbowl cleaner <laughs> as a possible cure? About 85%. Mm. Yeah, about 85 Okay. So, Mm. which is really smart, by the way, when you hear hydroxy or chloroquine and you see something that looks like it, like chlorine looks a little bit like chloroquine. Go ahead and try that. (laughs) You know, wait a minute. Hold on a second. This is not the first time that this has happened where a Babylon B story is reality. Mm -hmm. We just had, wasn't it Friday? You read a Babylon B story about a supposed Democrat who would rather die than to prove Trump was right about this drug. Yep. Ta-da! The poll numbers bear it out. Make it stop. (laughs) Pretty sad. Pretty pathetic. (laughs) Okay. 2020. What a year. I mean, you are... That's what we're dealing with, though. You are setting the bar high. Um, Got an announcement from our friends at Patriot Mobile to help Americans stay in touch with loved ones during this really tough time. Uh, They've reduced their prices even further. So... Right now, you can let their U.S.-based team design your customized family plan for only $25, $35, $45, or $55. They'll never charge you a hidden fee, and unlike the big mobile companies, they won't send your hard-earned money to Planned Parenthood or gun-grabbing Democrats. That's because Patriot Mobile only supports the conservative values you believe in. And it's really easy to switch, too. You can keep your phone number or get a new one. You could bring your phone or buy a new one. Uh, Join our family of freedom-loving Americans today and get free activation. Plus, they're also going to send you a free gift when you sign up. So call 972-PATRIOT. That's 972-PATRIOT. Or visit patriotmobile.com slash pat. Get your customized family plan for only $25, $35, $45, or $55. 972-PATRIOT or patriotmobile.com slash pat. Beware. Gray is unleashed. Triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. Also at Pat Unleashed on Twitter. Um, let's go to Wes in Oklahoma. Hey Wes, you're on the Blaze. Good morning, gentlemen. Morning. Uh, mm. I, you know, uh, I drive for Cargill, and uh, we haul meat. And mm-hmm. I would just like to uh, try to. Uh, Set some people at ease about uh, the procedures at our plant. The yes, please. At our plants. That would be great. Um, 
I don't know. I know all employees going in the plant that will be in the pro in the the you know production mm-hmm. of any type. I'm not sure what kind of screening they're going through, but I do know they're going through screening. Everybody that goes into the plant or anyone that has access to anyone that goes in the plant is screened. Um, when I go in, like our Freona facility, when I went in Monday morning, mm-hmm. geez, Wednesday is it? Um, they've they've had this tent set up, and you got to go in. And have you seen the, the the pictures of people from NASA that are working on satellites? How they're garbed, yeah. you know, with the that's what this guy looked like. Wow. I mean, <laughs> wow. that's how he looked checking the truck drivers that are coming in. Um, takes your temperature, then you go in, and the only people we actually have contact with are the security people that check us in and give us our paperwork. And, you know, we're practicing social distancing. They got a big can of hand sanitizer up there. They uh, ask you to please use it. Um, I mean, our facilities are taking this extremely seriously. Mm. So That's good to hear because, yeah, you don't want to be – you don't want to have doubts about our food supply and whether or not it's safe. Mm. Yeah. You know? So no, not at all. So, yeah. but so I was I hope that sets some people at ease. Yes, Keith. You know, so Wes, you you interact with these uh, meat packing plants and stuff like that. Could you ask someone um, next time that you're there, ask them if the coronavirus does cook out of meat? Because I am curious if if it does cook out of food. And it sounds like I'm just kidding around. I, I'm being serious. Like I wonder if that uh, how it survives. Uh, in that and i don't know that they would have the answer but uh i'm curious to, to see where it survives because we 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 mm-hmm. hear about how it survives on on metal and plastics and stuff like that i wonder what temperature yeah, it has heat? to get heat, heat yeah. should kill it right that's what we heard early yeah, on well, we're, yeah we're told at 80 it, it can't survive over 80 degrees mm-hmm. and yeah I'm, I'm like you though i'd like to know and uh i'm on the yeah. way to our uh turkey facility in arkansas uh, uh honeysuckle white by the way you know and uh <laughs> I will ask them when I get there and see if anybody there happens to know the answer to that. Yeah. All right. You Let know. us know when you find out, would you? I, I sure, sure, surely shall. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Wes. Thank Appreciate you, it. Drive safe. Uh, Jim in Tennessee. Hi, you're on the blaze. Hey, Pat. How hey. you guys doing? Doing good. Mm-hmm. Okay. Remember last week they released an article of like two guys in the empty semi saying this is for all the dead bodies that were going to happen in New York? Yeah. I'm not kidding. Yesterday, News Channel 5 in Nashville took that same picture, released an article saying we're putting these semis all over Tennessee for all the dead bodies that we're going to have. We literally have 109 dead people in the entire state. It was absolute fear-mongering, and I got excoriated for telling people that. The people saying I'm dumb, I'm just denying stuff. And then, lo and behold, last night they do an updated model thing and they're like yeah those three thousand bodies could be more like 210 now right so i mean it was just absolute yeah. fear-mongering it was ridiculous and that's that's happened over and over and over again since this thing began appreciate it thanks a lot jim uh it's it's madness and i you know it it's fulfilling an agenda of remaking the United States of America in the image of these socialists that are trying to take advantage of 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 this terrible uh, pandemic because once the United States completely shuts down and the economy is in ruins, I think they really believe that that's the time they can swoop in and get their agenda done because they'll say, well, look, it didn't work before. And look where we are now. We need to try something else. Plus they're already getting a lot of the spending done with the help of the Republicans, <laughs> which is amazing. Uh, you know, the Republicans are doing a lot of the work for them. They're saying, well, we want another uh, we want another $1 trillion uh, in spending. Well, wh- Republicans, why don't we make it two? Let's make it $2 trillion. If two is good, why not $4 trillion? <laughs> I mean, it's... Is is this a bad time uh, to, as long as we're coming up with these spending bills, to maybe um, stop uh, funding... The Wuhan laboratory where this probably originated. Well, we only spent, we only gave them $3.7 million what uh, to test. I, I don't know what they're testing. I, what? Bats, right? They're just testing whether the bat meat is delicious enough to, to eat here in the United what? States, I, I, too. Just... <laughs> like, it, it, if you hadn't heard that story, yeah, we're, we gave, we gave the Wuhan lab 
that everybody's talking about where we think this virus may have originated, we gave them $3.7 million for their research. Help. Why? And so, in other words, we funded. So, so what I'm hearing is we very likely inadvertently funded our uh, economic and health the, the crisis. The Wuhan right virus now. in <laughs> the United States of America. Yeah, Make yeah, it yeah. Stop. What? Is, I mean, <laughs> you don't enjoy that? Huh. So You're many so words picky. that just are all fighting to get out at the same time. So picky. Mm. Uh, let me tell you about uh, two guys losing their hair, Kyle and Josh. Both of them losing their hair, which wasn't shocking because, you know, male pattern bal- baldness ran in both their families. Hmm, never heard of it. Doesn't it run in everybody's family just about? <laughs> um, but the way they dealt with their hair loss couldn't have been more different. Kyle kept putting off getting a hair loss treatment, losing more hair by the day, while Josh went to Keeps to learn how to keep his hair. Keeps offers the generic versions of the only two FDA-approved hair loss products. They're the real deal. And the generic versions save you a ton of money. And Josh saved a fortune, plus he uh, took care of everything right online. Answered a few questions from his couch in his living room. Snapped some pictures of his hair. Sent them uh, in online. Then a doctor evaluated everything and recommended the right FDA hair loss treatment for Josh. Then it was shipped discreetly to his door. Keeps, it lets you save your hair without leaving your couch. And to get you started, we're going to give you half off your first order. Half off. Go to keeps.com slash pat. That's keeps.com slash pat. Stunning surprise. This is going to shock you to your core. Bernie Sanders just endorsed Joe Biden. Huh. Wow. Wow. I mean, right down, you're feeling it right down to your toes, aren't you? The, the, the shock, the surprise, the astonishment. So wait a minute. I'm kind of surprised. Cause I, Did you think he was going to endorse Trump? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what are the, chance, not, what are the choices here for? It's not a binary <laughs> endorsement, Pat. Kind of is. No, I'm just wondering if uh, I, I, he was obviously promised something. Because otherwise... Oh, he has. Otherwise, he was going to allow his minions, his Bolsheviks... Mm-hmm. To take over and uh, and rabble rouse against well and still Biden. like fifteen percent of Bernie's Bolsheviks say they they won't vote for Biden even so they're they're going to vote for I guess Trump uh, which I hope is true <laughs> I hope that happens but uh, here here's the video of uh, Biden and uh, Bernie making the announcement and then mm-hmm. Joe saying some great things about Bernie uh, and above and beyond. The oh. crisis that we're in right now, uh, you know uh, very well that millions of our people are working for starvation wages. And one of the fights that I've been waging for a number of years now is to raise that minimum wage uh, to at least 15 bucks an hour. Is that something, Joe, uh, that you are supportive of? Bernie, I am extremely supportive of that. And I thank you for leading on it. I thank you for your endorsement, your support. But it means, look, it means a great deal. To me personally, as I said in my statement, when you suspended your campaign, I want to thank you for being the powerful voice. And you've been the most powerful voice for a fair and more just America. Oh, my gosh. It's a voice like yours that refuses to allow us just to accept what is. Have it help us. You've refused to accept that we Uh. can't change what's wrong in our nation. Mm. You refuse to accept Mm -hmm. that health and well-being of our fellow citizens and our planet isn't the responsibility of Mm. somebody else. It's Mm -hmm. our responsibility. (laughs) Act night. And you don't get enough credit, Bernie. He doesn't. For being the voice that forces us to take a hard look in the mirror what? and ask ourselves, have we done enough? And we haven't. Yeah. Well, no, we haven't. You know, you've been the best voice for Karl Marx in America, right, Bernie. You really have the loudest, most dangerous voice for a socialist communist revolution in the United States of America. Thank you for that, Bernie. Thank you. I love the fact that you you fight class warfare every single day. You're you're. You're going against the, the wealthy and turning everybody in the country against the wealthy. And that is really wonderful. When you say that there shouldn't be millionaires and billionaires, well, except for you, obviously. You don't have a problem with being a millionaire. But you don't think there should be other millionaires or billionaires. And uh, that's fantastic. So what do you think? So Commerce? Thank you, Bernie. Commerce Secretary for Bernie? Yeah, something. Definitely something. Uh, and he says he's going to be... He's going to be a strong voice, and Joe said he needs him. Okay, well, all right. 
whatever. And, and again, it just shows you that Biden is not a moderate choice. Biden is going to accept a lot of this garbage from the Marxist uh, Bernie Sanders because I think he believes the same things that Bernie does. He's just doing it a little bit slower than Bernie wants to because he knows uh, he, he knows Americans aren't quite there yet. Even Democrats are not quite there where they're going to nominate a full-fledged socialist mm. for president of the United States. I mean, do you, you really think he knows? I mean, I guess it depends on I the day of the does. week. Yeah, I think. If he knows. Yes. But, uh, well, yeah. I mean, does he know anything right now? Yeah. Every once in a while, he does. He knows where he is. He knows where his shoes are. He knows if he's wearing pants. Sometimes, not so much. Yeah, and not, so. not a good time for Jill to be rearranging the furniture in the living room. No, really not. So, <laughs> really not. Yeah. So we're going to find out who the um, vice president uh, nominee is going to be. A Some lot of woman. people are saying this Whitmer chick up in Michigan who is yeah. you know, ruling with an iron fist up there, which right? would fit perfectly. You know who else they, uh, they're they talking about is, uh, what's her name, Adams? Uh, Stacy, is it Stacy Adams oh, from Stacey Georgia? Abrams? Abrams. Yeah. Stacy Abrams I from mean, Georgia. Totally had that oh. governor's race just Shh. ripped from her grasp by these cheaters yeah. in Georgia. Right. Who she, wanted to make sure only eligible people were on the ballot yeah. or on the on the rolls. But we all know she's the rightful governor of Georgia. Uh right. but there was a coup, and so yeah. she's not actually fulfilling that role. Got a but governor now. if he selected somebody that extreme, <clears throat> that radical, wow. What I mean, the, that tells what, you a lot. What will Bernie's Bolsheviks do then? They might go with him. <laughs> I think they might go with him under those circumstances. So there's there's uh, Stacey Abrams. There's Gretchen Whitmer. Uh, there's, of course, uh, Kamala Harris. She's a possibility, a big-time possibility, I think. Uh, Amy Klobuchar has been mentioned but no men, because they they've got a uh, a man unit in their pants, and, you, and thus they can't. Did you serve. already say Kamala Harris? I did. did okay. Yeah, that's who my money's on. Kamala. Yeah, it's, I, that would I, be the I figured most logical choice since she got out so early. You know, that's what she was angling for to be mm-hmm. somebody's vice president. Mm-hmm. She scares me. And she jumped on his bandwagon right away. Right as soon as she got off, uh, as soon as she got out of the campaign. She yeah. endorsed by, uh, Biden. Which was so. interesting because she was his most outspoken critic. Yes, at the uh, beginning. She almost she almost derailed him for a while. Politics is gross. It's amazing. It's really amazing. But also, looks like Mark Cuban, Mark Cuban might actually run a third-party campaign for president mm. due to coronavirus. President Cuban. Hmm. Um, wow. He's been pretty complimentary of Trump during the, the virus <laughs> thing. <laughs> Kinda, off and on. Off and on. Off yeah. and on. But he said in an interview with Chris Wallace on Sunday that he's not ruling out <clears throat> entering the race for president. Okay. What? He knows what day it is, right? <laughs> <laughs> we are in April, and uh, lots of states have voted. Bruh. Well, he's going third party, so he uh, doesn't have to win anybody's okay. uh, uh, nomination. If he if he runs as an independent, but yeah, you do have to ballots. You got to get on the ballot. So uh, I, I'm thinking even if he got on every ballot in the nation, he's probably not winning the presidency. No. Just a guess. No, if for no other reason, the NBA needs to get back on the court so that Cuban can stop being distracted yeah, by other things. Just give Mark Cuban something to do. <laughs> yes, please. Great to have you with us. 888-900-3393. B. DeBodine tweets. On the chicken wing surplus that we talked about a while ago. Never fear. I'm sure Jeffy can take care of any food surplus so there won't be any waste. Oh, yeah. That's a good point. That's we a were worried. good job for him. <laughs> yeah, that puts my mind at ease. Bob Blah Blah tweets, if your surgical mask smells like feet, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> uh, from Keith Milleron, I haul food ingredients all over the Midwest and every place I go is taking extreme precautions. It's really good to hear. Um, Lone Wolf, it almost seems like the coronavirus fatality projections were overestimated exponentially. Increasing exponentially. <laughs> Top right. 1% and 2% have done exponentially better. <laughs> right. Corporate profit yeah. has been up over exponentially. Uh, exponentially. Their profits have gone up exponentially. It's going to be up exponentially. <laughs> uh, from Libertarian Ninja, 
I fill vending machines at multiple plants, factories, and other facilities in my area. All of them require questionnaires, and many are taking temperatures of all the employees and visitors every time they come. Uh, from 2020 sucks. Looking at <laughs> looking at most Americans, they don't look like they're making starvation wages. <laughs> So good. Uh, that is uh, so true as well as uh, as being good. Uh, Ber- Bovine Scatology tweets, wait, Bernie thinks many people in America are working for starvation wage? Is this the same man who says bread lines are good? You know, it's funny. Sometimes American journalists talk about how bad a country is because people are right. lining up for food. Lining up for That's food. That's a good thing. It's a good thing. In other countries, people don't line up for food. The rich get the food and the poor starve to death. <laughs> okay. All right. I, I, I Help me. I know. I know. Mm-hmm. Uh, Pretty Princess Stephen Avery. Does, does anybody else feel like we just saw the first Biden Sanders 2020 ad? Ah, uh, with the video between the two of lovebirds. Wouldn't that be something? A 78-year-old man and a 77. Actually, they'd be 79 and 78 by mm. then. Uh, on the same ticket. Wouldn't that be interesting? Now, look. <laughs> you say there's no chance that he would pick Bernie. However, mm. this is the same party. Because remember, he's already pigeonholed himself into saying, I'm going to pick a female. Right. That's true. This is the party that would That's allow true. Bernie Sanders to get away, albeit temporarily until November, of identifying as a woman. If it would make the dream ticket happen for the Democrats. I'm Bernie Sanders, and, I, and I'm I, a chick. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, that Just would work. Looking for a point of personal privilege? Please, please don't, you know. Point of personal privilege? Yes, go ahead, Bernie. Go ahead. Please do not use, use gendered, gendered language to, to, <laughs> to address everyone. I'm, right. I'm a woman. <laughs> I'm a woman. Look at me. <laughs> Why not? I mean, have we seen things stranger than that? Absolutely, we have. No question we have. Triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. I gotta show you this uh, from. This is one of. I think this is one of Britain's major. Please show me something. I'm. I'm envisioning burning in a dress right now. Anything. Any yeah. video. Whatever you got. This Please. is one of their major morning shows. Oh um, yeah. Eamon Holmes defending a uh, conspiracy theory <laughs> that five G <5G laughs> causes coronavirus. Watch, watch well, this. absolutely. And the fake news that is traveling around at the moment is just ridiculous. Do you remember, first of all, of this, uh, that we can't so, ignore the 5G conspiracy theory. What is that all about? Right. So what, what various it? celebrities and some influencers are saying is that 5G is uh, a main link to the coronavirus. Uh, the coronavirus hmm. is man-made, some are saying. It's designed to cull the population. <clears throat> and the lockdown is actually just a device Hogwash. for the rollout of 5G, that we're being manipulated. What? And this rumor has been spread so far and wide mm-hmm. and has been so convincing to so many people that there's been some 30 acts of vandalism and arson uh, around the UK uh, damaging essential telephone equipment, which is just worrying. This infrastructure is so needed at the moment that people are going around and damaging it because of some rumor that is circulating. It's not true, mm-hmm. and it's incredibly stupid uh, to be. The only thing I, take, I totally agree with everything yeah. you're saying, but what I don't accept is mainstream media immediately slapping that down as not true when they don't know. It's not true. No one should attack Wait, or damage what? or do anything like that, but it's very easy to say it is not true because it suits the state narrative. State That's all I would say as someone narrative. with an inquiring mind. Shit. <laughs> wow. Then she does an about face and says, well, that's right. That's right, uh, uh, Ammon. Yeah. What? Wait, what? You were just calling it stupid and saying that there's no evidence, which you were right for doing that. And then he... He chastises her for saying that it was stupid and that there's no evidence. We don't know that uh, 5G isn't causing the coronavirus. That's crazy talk. Wow. that That's really hard to believe. I'm sure somebody out there is uh, assembling a map right now of 5G towers and... Patients. And coronavirus outbreaks? Yeah. I'll bet they I, are. I bet it's already out yeah, there. Yeah, I'll bet, I'll bet it is. <laughs> and it's probably fake, too. Uh, you know, I... What do you want to bet that, uh, so, I mean, it would be easy to fake a map like that. <sighs> but people will buy it 
You put it online, and people are going to buy it. It'll be on social media mm-hmm. before close of business. 888 900 Let me tell you about Ashford University. While you're spending your time at home, don't just think about your future. Do something about it. Get a degree from Ashford University that can help you have a brighter future, help you get a job, get an online bachelor's or a master's degree. They have programs that allow you to learn on a convenient and flexible schedule. Expert faculty teaches you real-world skills from real-world experience, from the comfort and privacy of your own home. In online classes built for, uh, built for you, you can pursue a degree to help you have a brighter future in one of Ashford's 60-plus programs like business administration, healthcare administration, and psychology. They have uh, 24-7 access to the classroom. Daily support. Financial aid is available. Ashford gives you the tools you need uh, to climb the corporate ladder. Ashford, uh, get get a great education right now. And get that degree that you thought you were going to get when you were, you know, 22. Education is personal at Ashford University. Your success is their success. There's no fee to apply There is no standardized testing required to enroll. Do it today. Go to ashford.edu slash unleashed. That's ashford.edu slash unleashed. Not all programs are available in all states. This is Pat Gray Unleashed. Uh, Studios barely... Planning on more straight-to-home movie releases because mm. the theaters are still closed and they don't have any idea when they're going to open up. Um, so if you're waiting for the movie theaters to open up so you can see something that you've been waiting to see for a really long time, there's a chance you might just watch it on your couch at home. Um, because... Everybody, all, all the major chains anyway, are all closed. I, I don't know of any movie theaters that are still open right now because you yeah. can only have 10 people get together, right? Oh, Jeffy's probably familiar with some movie houses that are still open, <laughs> uh, especially with that kind of limit of number of patrons inside. <laughs> yeah, where there's almost <laughs> never more than 10 uh, people in uh, trench coats. Uh, Thanks so for going there with me. <laughs> they, uh, <laughs> they already released Trolls World Tour. Are your kids too old for that stuff? Do they looking forward to troll movies? I don't I'd... know that they care. Yeah, I we didn't know. have not seen the troll movie. But they also released Emma, uh, the Ben Affleck sports drama, The Way Back. Hmm. They've released Bad Boys for Life. Uh, uh, on demand. They're doing a bad job of promoting this. I know. Because you would think that every time I turn on the Roku, there'd be a little banner ad. They should. Yeah, but I haven't seen any of these. Really? Yeah. Sonic the Hedgehog, none of those? No. Yeah, so they're available. Some of them are going straight to Netflix, too, or Amazon Prime. Mm-hmm. But most are available on you know the Google Play, the Vudu, the Apple. Uh, iTunes has a whole bunch of brand new movies. And... You just have to pay a little bit of a premium for it. Yeah. 20 bucks. Yeah, right. And when I see that price initially, I think... What the hell? I ain't paying that. Right. And And then then, you think... Oh, wait. Well, wait. If If the whole family went to the theater... (laughs) I know. It's going to be a lot more than that. And wait, I can pause this to go to the bathroom? Oh, okay. Yeah. You're right. Once you noodle it out, (laughs) it's it's not that bad. I, I think, anyway, because... Yeah. You know, if you have three or four people watching a movie, you would have paid, what, at least 40 bucks for it. And then I don't have to interact. I mean, that's priceless. I don't have to interact with people? Yes. Right. Okay, well, now now you're starting to... There's right. a lot more pros than cons at this price point. Yes, for nineteen ninety nine. Now, it still does shock a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, but I think that's, that's a pretty reasonable price. Because uh, if you took... You know, if, there, if you just did a date night with your spouse... That's over 20 bucks right there. Our theaters in uh, here in Texas, you know, the luxury theaters where mm-hmm. you get the recliners and all that, they're what, $14 a ticket now? So that's 28 bucks right there. Oh, you go at the wrong time of day. Well, yeah, if you go at night. <laughs> if you go during the day, yeah. I think it's 10 or 12. I do everything during the day. Do you? So <laughs> yeah. That worked out. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, th this could, like, like we've been saying for the longest time, this coronavirus, this COVID nineteen uh, reality is mm -hmm. going to change so many things. Some for the better, and most for the worse. Right. And uh, this might be for the better. This maybe might get, be. maybe get movies sooner at home. Yeah, but I like to take that, you know, that that empty bucket of for popcorn refills. You mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm. I mean, gonna kind of miss that. Well, you could make popcorn at home. Is it not the same? You don't have the fake butter poured all over it's, it. It's not the same experience. You <laughs> so know, yeah, it's, kettle it's not corn, the same. You know? uh, also, Disney uh, has gone from the top of the world and you know the most powerful media company on earth mm -hmm. to fighting for their life. Right now, uh, Disney is really struggling. In fact, we had that story a while ago, a couple of months ago, that Bob Iger, the CEO of Disney, was going to step down, and they were going to give it to the guy who headed up the theme parks. That's changed a little bit now. What's happening now? Bob Iger has re-taken uh, the reins at Disney, and he's going to try to see them through this. So, <laughs> so yeah, it's like... Um, okay, the other Bob, you know, from the theme park uh, division, yeah, uh, hang on a while because I'm back, and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna take us through this. So, so theme park Bob mm -hmm. probably cleared out his his cubicle. I'm sure he did. And moved into, moved into the, the office. corner office, right? And now he's got to move out, <laughs> right? That's awkward. Yes, it's very awkward. Huh. But uh, Iger believes that you know they need his experience right now, and he, he might be right. Uh, he's done a pretty good job at Disney so far. And so you probably want that experience while you're trying to figure out, okay, well, how do we get people back into the park when everybody's going to be afraid of the social distancing thing? All of a sudden you got another 30,000 people in the park and they're all jam packed together. And are we going to get the virus again? So you're going to have to deal with all that reopening Disneyland, Disney World, Shanghai Disney, you know, Paris Disney, France, whatever they call that. Mm. All the Disneys around the world have to be reopened. And he has said maybe one of the things we'll do is uh, take people's temperature uh, when they when they enter the park. Okay, I don't know if that's enough. I mean, Disney's the happiest place on earth, right? Yep. So it's totally worth it. How long is the incubation period for uh, COVID-19? Like five to fourteen days. Yes. Right? Okay. So, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, how long do you typically spend at Disney? Uh, three or four or five days. Right. Exactly. So let's say you catch it there. Yeah. You're not gonna be suffering until you get home, back to the comfort <laughs> of your home, so you can go and enjoy yourself. Right. Right. Go and enjoy Disney. Yeah. And then suffer at home later. It's worth it. Uh, yes. You're not gonna sure. get sick there. I mean, unless you're spending two weeks there, you'll be fine. Go and enjoy the park. <laughs> Why do I feel like Jeffy yeah. right now? Because that's kind of a Jeffy-like yeah. thing. Yeah, go ahead and get sick at the park. <laughs> don't worry about it. Uh, Just go have fun. Uh, I don't like feeling like Jeffy. Icky. Uh. So you've got that. You've got you've got the theme parks. And then what are, what else do they do? Cruise lines? Oh, snap. Who's going back to Disney Cruise Lines? Who's going back to yeah. any cruise line right, oh, right now? No. Uh, that's going to be a tough sell, I think, for a while. And then... You know, even the movie theater where you're packed in with a bunch of other people. Their whole business is built on things. Then you've got ESPN who has no sports to broadcast. They're in a really tough position right now. All of their main money drivers, all of their cash cows. Oh, yeah, that's Disney. Are yeah. all shut down. Let me think of that. Yep. Ooh. Everything's shut down. Well, at least you... ABC television. I mean, uh -huh. you've got all those shows that are put on hold. They're not going to they're not going to be doing anything new for quite some time that's yeah. it's gonna be tough yeah it's gonna be yeah. tough by the way but now is the time uh to catch up on all your shows and stuff because when sports comes back it's gonna be sports overload you got to make decisions man yeah because you're gonna have the in, uh, in theory you'll have the nba and the nhl coming back at the same time mlb is coming back and then you got football and then you got the masters in november mm -hmm. and we're gonna have some decisions to make with sports, we're going to have, it's going to be feast to famine. Yep. Or famine to feast, Keith, is how that works. <laughs> Man, I'm going to take a nap now. Good night. In the meantime, I'm just watching replays of great games from the past. Yeah, That's today MLB Network's doing, uh, somebody told me, thanks for tagging me on this one, Greg Maddox, uh, Greatest Games. I have to make the kids watch that. Greg Maddox, Greatest Games. Yeah. 
Wow, that's... Well, be, I'm sorry it's not a BYU-a-thon. That'd be special. But, uh, uh, that you would know, be special. We are desperate. I don't know if you know this or not. We haven't had live sports since March 11th. That's been a while. So that's over a month already. Mm-hmm. That's a month and three days already. Jeez. Yeah. Speaking of sports, uh, when sports come back, if sports come back... Shh. What do you uh, mean? It? What is that? Uh, don't be doing that, dude. <laughs> Drew Brees has already selected NBC over ESPN. So ESPN's Monday Night Football has been spurned Mm -hmm. by virtually everybody. Um, They've been spurned by Tony Romo. They've been spurned by Peyton Manning. And now they were spurned by (laughs) Drew Brees. Whoops. So Drew Brees is going to play one more year uh, at quarterback. And then when he retires, I guess he's going immediately into the broadcast booth for, for NBC. Hmm. Interesting. That is interesting. And apparently he's going to replace, well, Al Michaels and Chris Collinsworth are going to be replaced by uh, Mike Tirico, who's going to be the play-by-play guy, and I guess Drew Brees. Wait, so wait, where's Al and Chris going? Sunday Night Football. Uh, The retirement, uh, the old folks home. No! Yeah, did you not know that? No, I did not know that, and I don't care. Break it to me, NBC already has the plan in place. To replace Al Michaels. And it's in 2022. Two years from now. Is that amazing? I mean, the best guy in the business. And you've already decided, okay, you're too old. We're going to get well, rid of you maybe he decided, years. huh? I hope so, but yeah. I don't know that for a fact. I wonder what uh, John Madden is doing these days. Oh, I know. He's narrating videos of little kids <laughs> with Easter baskets, uh, courtesy of Frank Caliendo. Can we please uh, roll back? To the 20. To the 25. And he's walked down high. Here's a look from a reverse angle. Watch yes, little guy's just frolicking, and then boom! Oh. <laughs> he gets knocked out of frame there. Sure did. <laughs> and that's why you shouldn't put all your eggs in one basket. And that's why you should put your dog on a leash. <laughs> that wasn't a dog. Uh, that was a tackle, man. That was good form by that dog. Poor kid. <laughs> Need to cover up next time so you don't... Caliendo's Madden is perfect, but the Summerall is... I don't know. Is it? It's not quite there. It's, you know what it is? Here's what it is. Dana Carvey took George H.W. Bush and made him a unique character. Mm-hmm. So while it wasn't exactly George H.W. Bush, it was still hilarious. Yes. I think that's what's going on Same with thing the Pat Summerall, yeah. Frank Kelly yeah, yeah. deal. But usually when he does an impression, he nails it. Yeah. He's just not exactly there with Summerall. Maybe his voice isn't unique enough. I, I don't know. Uh, it would be a hard one to do, I think. Mm-hmm. Also, we got this great meme from Pathead uh, Arch Duquesne mm-hmm. that really kind of <laughs> says it all. Look at this. This is fantastic. This is, yeah. You got a, you got a guy laying on the floor with a boot <laughs> smashing him down. And it says, government response to COVID-19. The American citizens are the guy uh, with the boot on his face. <laughs> Thank you for keeping me safe. There we are. There we are. Stay down there. So yeah. and so the person the person wearing the boot would either be uh, Governor Whitmer of Michigan or any of the other uh, heavy-handed governors Bashir in uh, Kentucky. Mm. Boy, Kentucky. Yeah. Wow. Uh, so which you wouldn't expect it from Kentucky. But he's been really oppressive. Gross. Uh yep. That's what you get for getting rid of Matt Bevin. Yep. We tried to warn you, but mm. whatever. Tried to tell you. Wouldn't listen to us. Triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. Speaking of yeah. speaking of oppression and uh, things that shouldn't be happening right now, look what happened in Britain. Thank you. The other day, uh, with this British citizen, when police just bust into his home all of a sudden. Watch this. Some expletives right. being used here. Listen to us. Hello. We've got a call, haven't we? Because we've got to come, otherwise... We've got to call. There, there might be something going on here, so... <laughs> right. We need to double-check. I appreciate what, what you're you saying want? about social distancing, so I'm yeah. giving you the distance. Now, f*** off. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 Stay name? away from me. What's your name? No matter. No well, matter. What are you doing in my house? I'm coming to his house. What are you what doing are in my house? What are you doing in my house? I have just explained to you. What are you doing in my house? I've just explained to you why we're here. We've had a call. It was a disturbance. That's why I'm... They got a call. Should you have opened it? Pause it for a second. Okay, so police have busted his door. They busted it. They broke it in. Yes, they did. And then they just enter. And he's like, what are you doing in my house? 
we got a call that there was a disturbance. So they somebody called and said there was some activity going on in his house. Mm-hmm. And there's nothing going on in his house. Uh, it's Watch the rest of this. This is uh, stunning. No, I told you why I wouldn't open the door is because of what is going around this virus right. now. F off. Right. And get out of it. What time size Look at you. You might have it. Pause no, for a second. Yeah, I, I, it just occurred to me. In all of these videos, Pat, mm-hmm. whether it's the bus in Philly or this apartment in Britain, these police officers that are so adamant about social distancing and protecting the public aren't wearing any protective gear whatsoever. Yeah. Anyway. Right. So they're not protecting this guy Look whose house this. they've invaded. Look, they're entering see, his house without protect. Okay. Let's see the rest of this. Everything's all right. Go away. Come on. Go away. Come Have a look. 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 There's nobody yeah. there but this guy. No nope, going on in here, is there? Yeah. yeah. And yeah, this goes nothing going on. on in here, is there? And it goes on and on. And he shows <laughs> us the busted door. Look at what they did because he refused to answer the door. There's yeah. a long crack right down the middle. It's a pretty important place right through the lock. Yep. I'd be pissed as well. Uh, that's very uncool. Western And Gestapo-like. Yeah. Right? There was no reason to bust this guy's door down. And just walk through there and find out there's nobody there but him. And then they just leave. All right, see ya. Well, wait a minute. What about my broken door? Uh, you're going to replace that? You're sending people over to fix this? Uh-huh. Yeah, you know they're not. Oh, they'll get right on that. Yeah. This is the, uh, the same nation that takes how many months for a cancer screening? Oh, I'm sure they're going to come over and make good on that door they busted That's down. That's crazy. That's just crazy. And as far as dragging people off of buses in Philadelphia that we showed you yesterday, yeah. with 10 cops dragging a guy. Now, all of a sudden, oh, we're not going to do that anymore. Yeah, we're not going to enforce it. What, <laughs> okay. what, what, what mask policy? Huh. What are you talking about? No, we don't have a, a mask wearing policy on buses. No, 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 no. Ask yeah, some other city. Amazing. Help us. Help all right. Us. We are. We are. Oof. It's decision time, Western civilization. Sure is. Sure is. 888 Use that uh, number tomorrow. We'll see you then. Stay healthy. Pat Gray, only on the Blaze Radio Network.